Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are going to talk about the default game engine and a product called Rive because they just announced a partnership between the two and I know if you're a regular this channel you probably know about default but we'll cover that in a few minutes but Rive, Rive is probably new to you but the thing is I covered this in the past it was actually used to be called two products it was Nima and Flare by Two Dimensions. And these were vector animation packages and one had a little bit more raster side to it. What they've done is they've merged those two products together into one, which is now called Rive. So we're gonna start with a bit of a hands-on with Rive and go from there. So this you can see here is Rive. Uh, I've got a couple of different projects open in artboards. If you've worked with any vector graphics application before, you've got a pretty good idea of how this works. And if you don't particularly like their tools, the good news is you can actually drag and drop in SVG files or PSD files. Uh, so you can work in other tools and use this just as an animation tool, but you can also use it as a creation tool. So come over here, you got the creation tool and you've got your pens. You can make artboards, uh, create bones, groups, and various different primitive shapes. And then you kind of compose these shapes together like you can see here for Dory into an object. So you can see here, Dory has um, a skeleton controlling her. So we got various different bones in the body. You see here a bone there a bone there, and so on. And then once you've got it all set up, you've got all of the layers together. You've got such as your, your body here, your fin, your tail at the back, the mouth shape here, all of those things. Once you've got them right configured, what you do is just head on over here to animate, and you've got a traditional timeline style animation here. So you can see here various different pieces such as the bubbles in the scene. Uh, we've got another ellipse in the scene that's being animated, the various pieces of the body, and so on. And you see here, there are a number of different keyframes across a number of different variety of things too, by the way. So you can have rotation and scaling keyframes in this particular case, and we'll see what these go together to do. So there you see, you can use Rive to create uh, vector graphic style animations that are bone controlled. You've actually got a bit more advanced control than this. Let's go, uh, let's go scroll out. One thing I'm gonna show you in the meantime here, this fellow you may recognize, uh, this was an SVG file I just dropped into the scene. And yeah, easy enough, you can have multiple artboards. So here you can see all the various different shapes that go together to control Cartman. And again, we could apply a skeleton to this guy and make it work. Or if I keep going over with the artboard a little bit more, where did I put you? Oh, way over here. All right, let's zoom in over here. Let's select this artboard. And you'll see this one, this scene here has uh, some nice shield it's got like a a cloak waving effect going on being controlled by a set of bones here but it's a custom shape custom shape path behind the scenes here and again it is animated so you see the various different flag bones are in action here and let's see the results of it so there you go and it is uh a way you could easily create uh, details, animated details in your scene. You could create animated characters in your scene and so on. And the key thing with this guy is it's a two-sided product, just like a lot of these things. You've got Spriter, you've got Spine, you've got Dragon Bones, and you've also got Rive. And all of them have run times that you can use to uh, embed them in your own game engine of choice. Or in the case of the default game engine, they have uh, their own integration. Now I suppose I should let the monkey out of the bag now that we're three and a half minutes into this video. And I'm going to hit F11 and show you that, yeah, yeah, we're in a web browser. It's just one of those things to be aware of. This is a browser-based app. So for those of you that hate browser-based apps... It was nice talking to you. See you next video. But for everybody else, it actually works quite well. And as I mentioned earlier on, uh, I could go ahead here. There's my Cartman SVG. You can literally drag and drop things into the scene. Um, so there, it just imported it in. I've already got it in the scene, so that may cause issues. But that's how easy it is to bring things. Oh, no, it's hidden back here. So it's behind this artboard. It's right there. So there's Cartman right there. So there you can go. That's that's what's involved in bringing things into the scene. It's a pretty simple process. And then at the same time, if you want to get your stuff out, you can export it down here, or you can get a variety of different runtimes. Now, when I was talking about runtimes earlier on, uh, the current options that exist, there's a web runtime, so you can actually run and play your animations in your own website. Uh, there's an iOS, Android, Flutter, and C++-based runtimes out there, as well as community-based ones for React, Vue, and Angular. Now, what you may notice here is none of these are really game-related. Obviously, uh, you could adapt these particular ones to work in your game of choice, but there's no direct game integration, game engine integration. There's no Unity runtime or Unreal Engine runtime or Godot runtime, but what there's going to be is a default game engine runtime. So that's the other part of this news. So Default, if you've never heard of it, I have done a multi-part tutorial series on it. I am quite the fan of Default. It is, I'll call this one open source-ish. It doesn't use an uh, OSI certified open source license, but the license that it's under is quite liberal in what it allows you to do. And the source code is available that you can change it to your heart's content. 
you just can't fork it and sell your uh, derived engine product. You can make a game out of it. You just can't make another game engine project out of it. That's kind of the, the, the key difference between it and, say, like Apache or MIT, for example. Uh, it is an excellent game engine. It's got all the tools you need to make two and two and a half D games for a variety of different platforms, as you can see right here. Uh, the underlying language is Lua, uh, but it uses a really cool messaging system. That Once you start to understand what's going on here, it, it is quite powerful. It's also quite um, battle-tested. This was developed in-house originally by King. Yeah, that King. Uh, and it was used to make some of their games. Uh, they have since, again, spun it off and forked it as an open source project. So uh, that is the default engine we were talking about. And the big announcement is that the default foundation has partnered with Rive, uh, announced partnership with Rive Inc. to support for uh, Rive's real-time animations in the default game engine. Developers will be able to design and animate in-game characters, UI elements. That's actually kind of another area where this is really nice. You can use it to create menus that pop out or uh, on-screen controls for your character and so on, uh, all animatable. Um UI elements, screen transitions, and more in the Rive application, and easily integrate them into your default games. The animations will run in real time with full runtime control and access to the object hierarchies, bones, and shapes. That means the dynamicism behind uh, Rive, you see in the editor, you can actually recreate in your game. So if you want to move bones around and have them react differently, or I guess you could have programmatic stuff like switching out character gear, well, you have access to all the underlying animation controls there, so you're not just baking the animations out into the like a sprite sheet. Uh, you have full runtime dynamic animation going on here. Um, so uh, Rive takes real-time vector uh, animations to a completely new level with powerful animation mixing, skeletal animations, mesh deformations, and inverse kinematics. There's nothing close to it on the market. <coughs> bullshit. Uh, and we are thrilled to be able to offer this to our community of game developers. On that topic, there's also Spriter, Spine, uh, Dragon Bones, COA tools, Google, uh, sorry, Godot has something like this built out of the box. I think there might be a cutout animation tool in, or a skeletal animation tool in, uh, in, 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 uh, the Unity engine now too, but I'm not 100% certain. There's at least a couple on the store. So that line is, is interestingly wrong. Uh, but uh, the full uh, foundation will work in parallel on the uh, engine integration of the Rive animation runtime and on the development of a new high-performance vector tessellation library suitable for use in game engines. That's actually kind of cool because ironically that may actually enable Rive to work a bit better on other game engines. So we might start seeing things like Godot and Unreal and Unity, etc. show up after that. Uh, Tessellation Library will release separately and ahead of the full integration, which will be released later this year. Excited to bring Rive to the gaming world through our partnership with the full. The product is exceptional and shares astonishingly similar, similar principles with Rive. The best tools should be accessible to everybody, simple to use with no setup, and truly cross-platform. So that is that. Uh, another announcement that I'm just going to kind of tack onto this video. This happened a few weeks back. It wasn't big enough to make its own story. Uh, but uh, the default game engine is also now available on Steam. It's always a good move, in my opinion, because it gives you basically a little bit more exposure, especially to the more casual crowd. Uh, so people like looking to get started in game development, they head on over to Steam, they can find it there. You know, Blender's on there, the Godot game engine's on there. Uh, it's a good move. It's nice to see them there, and that's where they are. So if you want, you can grab it that way, or you can just head over to uh, default. What is their website? Uh, default.com. Yeah, that's easy enough. Uh, in terms of Rive, uh, they have a very interesting website, as you can see right here. So you start it off right here, and then you actually have to scroll, and it scales down and shows you a screenshot of Rive in action, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, go down here again. They have uh, various different runtimes. Now, the question that a lot of you are probably interested in is this one. What does this thing cost? And here we are. Uh, basically, it boils down to Rive is free for individuals and supports paid plans for teams. Teams allows you to create a shared space where you and other team members can collaborate in real time, no matter where you are. Um, so individuals, everything you need to make powerful, dynamic, and interactive animations with Rive, that is free. So if you are like a single animator, that's a good way to go. Uh, if you're in a studio, this adds the ability for your team to collaborate in real time with the studio plan. That's $14 per month per user or on an annual plan or $21 a month per user monthly. And then we've got an org. Uh, this create infinite number of teams, centralized account management with the org plan. So that is the licensing deals on it. Um, there are a number of samples that you can do to get started if you want to go and check it out. Well, first off, this website is rive.app. Uh, then you can basically sign in with your uh, like Google account or an OAuth provider, and then you launch it, and it brings you to here. Uh, and this is uh, kind of your, your launch portal kind of thing here. So this is where the, the project I was working on exists. I can create a new project right here. Uh, and then if you want to bring in existing content, which by the way, if you go to resources, you can find um, some examples from the community. 
Uh, so we've got a preview tool that you can drop your Rive in to see how it would play on your particular animation. We've got the ver various different runtimes available. And then we switch over here to, what is it? Was it community? Oh yeah, sorry, community. And you can find a number of different Rive examples. So for example, I wanted to do this Martin McFly example. I could come here and we'll just go ahead and download that. And then I'll head back over to the editor. Uh, here, let's create a new one. So create a new project like that. And then getting it in is literally just a matter of grabbing the Rive file and dropping it into your scene. And there you go. Uh, you can pan around the world right mouse button. I really wish that was middle mouse button. They're kind of, they bucked a couple of conventions with their UI controls and I find it really frustrating. Uh, but for the most part here, you can see the hierarchy as it is drawn and created. So here's your root node. There is Marty, there is his hips. And then you see from the hips, there is a skeleton controlling everything coming out. The skeletons are done via a series of bones and then everything else is a series of graphics that are um, kind of linked to those bones. So here you can see the leg inside of the leg. we got the path, we got the hips here, go down, they control all the various different pieces. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the idea. Once you've got everything set up and drawn and created the way you want it to be, you can switch over here to uh, the animations tab and you start keyframing each individual thing over time. By the way, you can grab any particular keyframe you want and slide it around in the timeline uh, and that will have a profound effect. You also have interpolation for moving between keys available over here. And that's, that's kind of essentially it. Once you've got what you want going on here, uh, you can basically go ahead and export it out yourself right there. And as you saw earlier on, uploading a RIVE file is as simple as drag and drop. So that's it. Let me know what you think of Rive, also the artist previously known as Nima slash Flair from Two Dimensions, which I think they've also rebranded their company as well, and the default game engine, and more importantly, the integration of the default game engine and the Rive Vector Graphics Animation app. That's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.